Mm. And so, you know, Nikki, that brings us to you being here. What, you know, being a publicist, doing everything that you have been mm. doing in the fashion industry, what, what prompted you to say, I want to dedicate a space to black moms? Mm. So, I mean, we, we have so much to touch on right now, but so I reached out to Simona Noche, right? She's my better half, my co-founder. Um, she's a film publicist. So at the time, she, I, she was supposed to be doing um, publicity for the movie Bad Moms. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? She's dope. We never met. Mm -hmm. You know, social media connects us all. That's okay. how you and I met. So I've been following her via Instagram. We're cool. And I said, you know, why don't we meet up and plan to have a, an event for millennial moms of color in the DMV area? Mm -hmm. Specifically because I'd seen nothing else like this. No. So this was in 2016. Um, Nick was, I guess, four years old. I'd go to different play dates and mommy groups, and nobody there looked like me. And I don't think that that mm -hmm. was intentional. Yeah. You know, you got Georgetown moms, bloggy moms, all this, all that. They never actually made me feel unwelcome. But when okay. you get there, I don't. We don't look alike. We don't mm -hmm. talk about the same things. We don't have the same concerns. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, child wearing everything. So I said, okay, why don't we curate a one-time event for okay. moms of color in the DMV area? I hit up Simona, uh, and because I'm a PR girl and an event girl, she's a film publicist. I said, let's make it real cute and base it on the movie Bad Moms. Oh, she had wow. actually just come off of maternity leave. Um, she'd given wow. birth three months prior. So we couldn't tie in the Bad Moms movie, but we said, hey, why don't we meet up for coffee mm -hmm. and see if there's some synergy and if we can come up with an event um, outside of that, outside of the Bad Moms um, theme. We met, we hit it off right away and just started talking like, okay, let's have this one event. But then we said, well, what is the premise of this event? Is it just gonna be a party or is it something bigger? Because the whole reason I wanted to have the event is because there wasn't anything in the area that catered to our demographic. Millennial moms, young moms who look good, mm -hmm. dress good, go out, who haven't lost themselves to motherhood. What about an old bitch with a new baby? <laughs> old bitches too with a new baby. Okay. You know okay. what, we have a lot of <laughs> older moms that old come bitches. and hang with us too. <laughs> so it's like, we're, we're even, that's a different conversation, but <laughs> our, our segment is millennial moms, but we attract younger moms and older you. moms, so if you're cool, you can come hang with All us. Right, as long as your spirit's right, you can come hang Ooh, with us. I like that. Um, but yes, we started to think like it's bigger than just this one event. So we mm -hmm. went home. We literally texted each other. We're like, okay, let's come up with a name for this organization. District. We live in districthood. Mm -hmm. District. Okay, motherhood. But Mother Hued. We're brown moms. Okay, district Mother Hued. Literally that day, we had a name. We had a logo. Wow. Well, I contacted my girlfriend who does branding. She got a logo for us, bought the domain, picked up the social media account, like literally that evening. Wow. So by the end of the week, we rolled everything out, came up with a name for the event, the Mom Loft. And that was August 2016. Wow. We had our first event, October 2016. And the rest That's is history. <laughs> it was only supposed to be a one-off event, yeah. the Mom Loft. Um, so we're just going to gather 50 of the coolest moms in the DMV area to come out, wow. be pampered, connect with one another. We had Industrial Bank as a sponsor to speak on financial literacy. We highlighted different mompreneurs in the area. We always we always spotlight black-owned, mom-owned wow. businesses so they could come and vend. We had food. We had wine because moms love wine. Moms yes. need wine. <laughs> we need wine. It's a part of parenting. <laughs> um, and it was, I mean, there was the energy in that room. Mm -hmm. It was incredible that evening. We were like, yo, like, we were near tears just watching everyone connect and fellowship. It was so genuine. Wow. So the night was over. We're like, okay, it's done. The next day, it's like, okay, when's the next event? And we're like, the next event? Uh, okay, <laughs> I, guess, I guess we'll do another one. And so since 2016, wow. we've had maybe 15 to 20 sold out <sighs> events. Um, Wow. We debuted our conference in 2018, okay. the Momference, which is the nation's premier um, conference for millennial moms of color. And that really stemmed from women across the nation seeing what we were doing in the DMV area, wow. saying, well, one, we want to hang with y'all, um, and two, women would reach, us, reach out to us with so many different mm -hmm. um, questions. So outside of us just being a social organization, sure. we also provide like resources. So we have like a list of black OBGYNs, of black therapists. You know, if you need a child, a child care, we have mommy That's spot. Pretty, pretty much anything that you need in the DMV area, we can find it for you. We'll get you that resource. Um, but we also wanted to address other topics like mm -hmm. postpartum depression, finances, um, raising children wow. with disabilities. And we can't really house that content within our events because each event is theme specific. So we said, hey, well, why don't we, we're not busy enough. We already, we have kids, <laughs> we got husbands, we got jobs. We're not, we're not busy. Let's have a whole conference too, which was a beast to plan. Wow. A beast. But we um, debuted that 
May 2018, we had Julie Wilson from Essence Magazine as one of our wow. keynotes, Kalana Barco Brown from InStyle or formerly InStyle okay. as our other keynote, and we had 20 different thought leaders from across the nation. So you're our in. mentor now. You're one of our mentors. Just mm-hmm. FYI. Mm-hmm. You know what? Whatever y'all need, I'm here. Heads up. Mm-hmm. Um, We're needy too. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my life. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what to do with my life. And I, I love that you started talking about postpartum because I just gave birth in February mm-hmm. to my third daughter and my husband caught, caught me up. I got caught up in the game. I don't wow. even know what happened. If you, follow, <laughs> if you follow me on social media, I'm always like a slow dismount. Slow dismount. I don't, I don't know what happened. I swear. Like if, when you get pregnant, you know when you get pregnant. You're like, okay, that night was lit. I don't know when this Yo. All I know is that I came back from the cruise and was like, are you serious? Yes. <laughs> so I just gave birth in February, and I actually dealt with postpartum. And I didn't expect it because I didn't have postpartum with my other two children. Mm-hmm. So just hearing you speak about it, and I've been very, very vocal and open and honest because I don't think that black women address this as frequently as we should. So I'm glad that you touched on that. Um, and it's just been a lot to go on this year. Wow. <laughs> Dr. Royce, what say you? You're the, the seasoned <laughs> right, mom. Right, right, yes. right. Oh, you the OG. You're the OG, OG mom. OG, OG mom. <laughs> That's Ooh. right. I have a 14-year-old and a 15-year-old girl. Oh, wow. Uh, so, mm, mm. Um, I mean, this is a fantastic topic because there are different mom organizations around the country. Mm-hmm. Mocha Moms. Mocha Moms is the OG. Yeah, that's the OG, oh, right? So the, I was like, what's yeah. she talking about? There ain't no black moms. That's no, mom. what's, 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 uh, Mocha <laughs> Moms <laughs> is, uh, I don't know if this is still on. Yeah. Mocha Moms is, uh, yeah. They, yeah. they paved the way for the yeah. mother here. Yeah, so there have been, but you, there's always a need to feel connected and to fit in, especially mm-hmm. after mm-hmm. you have a baby, because it's very isolating. Oh, my gosh. Um, because oh. people, really? yeah, it is, because the, all of a sudden, if people have talked about this. There is, like, for nine months, you're the focus. Oh, you're, you're amazing. You're going to have this baby. Mm-hmm. You're this, that, and the other. And then, like, that, it switches, and the baby is the focus. Oh, really? Absolutely. And the mom just disappears. You suddenly, be, and many, many women struggle oh. with this. You become Kayla's mom. You become, you know, Sasha's mom. You oh, become wow. Star's mom. And people don't even know your name for years. <laughs> really? I remember years. having Zara and going to a friend's house, and they came outside. Where's the, ba- the baby? Because you remember for my baby shower, people came because mm-hmm. they said, bitch, I want to just make sure that you're pregnant. Because <laughs> I can't even believe that exactly you having a baby. <laughs> Hey, it was really like a like a big deal. Like people really just want to say, like, you're really pregnant. Are you yeah. really? Yeah. Are you being so, dramatic? Are right, you right, right, right. And so I remember pulling up, and they came outside. And I was like, "Where's the baby?" And they they opened my car door, took the car seat out, shut the door, and walked in. And I was still in the car. That's oh right. my goodness! I was, it was like I wasn't even. Present, wow. and so I said, I was like, "Damn, like y'all not even gonna speak to me." Right. I mean, right now, <laughs> Faye, and it could be my fault because I, you know, my daughter, I call her Fancy Faye. That's my girl. Aww. But literally, it's like, "Where's Fancy Faye? Where's she at?" Everywhere mm-hmm. I go, oh, this is Faye. Is this Faye? Nikki? Who? And that's really? cool. It's all good. But she's valid. Very right, valid right. point. So, so what like, happens at like mentally to moms when they? So have I think babies. you get absorbed in becoming that child's mother. Okay. And that's not a bad thing. But it is like Nikki said, we need to remember that we were people first. Okay. And we need to model for this child, particularly for girls, mm-hmm. what it's like to be a woman and have multiple roles. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Okay. And not just get absorbed in mm-hmm. one role to the exclusion of all the other wonderful parts of yourself. Wow. And so it's very hard as a black mom, because at work they expect you to be 110%. Mm-hmm. At home they expect you to be 100%. Mm-hmm. Your husband mm-hmm. expects you to be 200%. Listen. Right? <laughs> and so everybody is, and especially an infant, they're like, they're needy. Sucking all on, all right? <laughs> They're like, and the husband is like, hey, that used to be mine. And don't touch it. Right? So <laughs> you, you have so many people competing for you and the pieces and the parts of you, but no one's attending to you. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and then so, the, the expectation, because I know ooh. when I was with um, my daughter Zara, her, her father, older from the South, I had strep throat, and, and I said, hey, I, like, I need your help. Yeah. And he was like, well, you're her mom. That's what you're supposed to do. Ooh. Now, mind you, you know, our situation probably was a little volatile, and his mind frame was, is not as progressive as some of the men these mm-hmm. days. So it's not to say that all men are thinking like that, but the point in me saying that was mm-hmm. that a lot of times, even men, or even as great as they can be, sometimes their expectation is, well, it's like, I mean, you're, you're the it's mom. Your baby. You know, yeah. well, the culture and the, gender roles. Yeah, the, I was yeah. about to say, the culture and the stereotype for generations has have been that moms are the ones that babies want. 
And babies mm-hmm. want attention. They don't care whether it's male, <laughs> female. Sasha, I told you I was going to bring Faye initially when we spoke, right? Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Yes, because I actually do take my daughter everywhere I go. I mean, you? because I do nurse, exclusively okay. breastfeed, all of that. But I have separation anxiety, and I also don't trust my husband to watch her. Really? Right. So I told her so she's we coming with me, and everybody sometimes. knows... Uh, Faye's gonna be with Nikki. Mm-hmm. So the fact that she's not here, like I'm so proud of making strides. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm it's praying, awesome. keep feed her. Did you do this? Text her, is she alive? She's she alive. <laughs> yeah. We are here for you. That's right. That's if right. you need to cry, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, don't cry because then she's gonna start lactating. And oh, so, really? Is this is yes. a thing. Oh, that was a joke. No, no, that's not, not a, joke. a joke. That is not if a joke. If you cry, you start your breasts start to leak. Yes. Yeah, it no. depends. No, it's called a letdown. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I used to actually enjoy breastfeeding. I used to get I an euphoric feeling. Yeah, and people would say that it hurt. And I was like, this is the only time I would get sensation. Yeah. What are you talking was about? During breastfeeding. Like, like a what? I no. didn't feel an orgasm, no, but like I a felt down. euphoric. Yeah. Like yeah. when, like if I'm having sex and a man tries to suck on my breast, like I'm like, nah, it's for you because yeah. I ain't getting nothing yeah. from it. There's nothing. But about when I was pregnant or especially afterwards, and I was breastfeeding and you know sucking on my, I used to want to show like her father's like suck on my breast. It's like please, because <laughs> 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 it felt so good. So it, when she was when I was lactating, like, like when she was breastfeeding, I wasn't like, oh baby, this feels. Good. It wasn't like that. Right. No, yeah. it was yeah. like, but I was like. Damn, like this, I don't know what pain they talk about. That's a sense of peace, I felt like. It was was euphoric. Yeah. Yeah. She literally lives on my boobs, and I don't know how I'm going to wean her. We're eight months in. Um... She barely drinks a bottle, so I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen. What's too like, old? What? Like, you know, I told you the story of my I friend where her daughter old, opened her jacket but... up. I was like, no, what was that? It was somebody on TV that was recently, like, the kid was eight. Yes. Was like, but that's this, too old. Was this a, a black woman? I, I think it was a white woman. So, the black woman that I think Music Soul Child used to talk to. Yeah, she was. Well, she, her, her child was like five or six. And I, but if you think about it, I mean, breastfeeding is in developing countries when babies need nutrition, that's where they get it. And right. so they eat food, but if they need nutrition, they go back to the mother's breast. And so it is in our westernized okay. culture. But it is very strange she eats to well. imagine I mean, they a five-year-old. Because like, I, I, I say, if they can unbutton well. your blouse, they too old. I told you, that's my friend. Her <laughs> daughter was like opening her shirt. I was like, what the fuck? Well, see, I'm judging. Doing? Y'all might catch me in two. Like, uh, <laughs> she was going to stop. <laughs> but naturally, the kids I'm do. Sorry, after a certain age, it's really more for comfort exactly. and to be close to you. Okay. And so if you give them that connection, they're not going to want the breast because they like chicken nuggets. Right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Got tea but on my but titty. <laughs> they really want that closeness and that attention from you. So if you're giving that, they're going to wean naturally mm-hmm. at some point. And different kids are, are different. One daughter weaning was most difficult thing most painful thing i ever did the other daughter i was like she don't was you want to yeah. before like, that i was like no you need to stay here until, until one. one i'm good, right. until right. one. I'm good mom i need you to drink <laughs> some more right and so it's just every kid is different and the mom has to again adjust, adjust. Mm-hmm. to someone else's needs someone mm-hmm. else's expectations thereby denying her own so what do we say about like we said changing the narrative of black motherhood like for so long we spend so much or some of us spend so long trying not to get pregnant Mm -hmm. (laughs) and now it's like being a mom is cool all of a sudden it It, was not cool back in the day it's cool it's so it's so funny because i will say that when we started district motherhood we were, I guess, one of the only organizations in the DMV area, and now there are maybe 10. Oh, wow. Um, and just in general, in social media and at working as a publicist, motherhood has always been a business. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. Um, mom influencers were the ones to be profitable first mm-hmm. yes. before beauty, fashion, any, any other um, demographic. But now with social media and you have people de- depicting like this perfect image of motherhood, yes. you know, the, the clean home mm-hmm. and the well-dressed kids and the coordinated outfits. I'm guilty. I love to coordinate with my, with my <laughs> daughter and my son. But, I mean, it looks beautiful. So yes. it's like, okay, I aspire to have that. But outside of that, we don't always discuss what's going the on real, behind yeah. the scenes, um, mm. what the, the realty is, mm-hmm. how you pushed everything out the way, mm-hmm. yeah. pushed all the mess out the way so you can get the picture right here, but everything behind you is a disaster. Right. <laughs> um, the postpartum, the exhaustion, I mean, mm-hmm. getting the kids to and from school, laundry, like it's work. Motherhood mm-hmm. is work. Mm-hmm. We glamorize motherhood, but at the same time, I guess it is cool. You do want to have a mom yeah. squad, a mom tribe, you know. What's it like for you, though? I mean, you're selling this this very cool image and you know of black motherhood, What's it like to sell? You know, sometimes when you put yourself in that spot, like, 
the weight of it can be the re- weight in reality can be even heavier because it's like oh, okay I gotta look I gotta come out the house looking right I gotta come out a certain way well I will say with my brand mm-hmm. I can't speak with others mm-hmm. one I don't even c- categorize myself as an influencer so when people like reach out to me or they say oh Nikki is doing x y and z it's so weird to me because I don't look mm-hmm. I don't look at myself that way one two I keep it very real if you follow me on social media mm-hmm. that's on my page you might see the nice pictures the highlight reel but in my stories oh it's real 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 okay, okay? you'll see the mess you'll see everything the no makeup mm-hmm. I keep I'm late to school <laughs> My kids are getting to school at two two hours late. Sorry, my bad. And I'm wearing a super mom t-shirt. Like, I'm not <laughs> super mom today. But I keep it very, very real. So I, I can only speak for myself. Um, whereas other women, it really is all about, you know, just glamorizing mm. motherhood. And it, it's not a glamorous thing. Did, um, did you notice, you know, when you started District Motherhood and even leading into the mom friends, did you notice a difference when you were – participating with some of the groups that consisted of mostly white moms. Because what I have found that in the white mom groups or just white women in general, they have they tend to be a little bit more honest about um, what's taking place in their lives as a mom or um, being more willing to, to discuss things. But I also feel like they don't have the same pressures and struggles mm-hmm. and they responsibilities don't. as black women. Um, so they, I feel like they almost, they can be. But what I notice is that a lot of times within, within the black uh, black mothers, it's like, did you notice that there was a void that you were filling in, in, in what you saw with these other moms and, and seeing that, you know, it gave them a space to be more honest. It gave them a space mm. to be transparent. Or did you Absolutely. see that there That's was, there was a, a sense of emptiness, um, that you noticed <laughs> that was different compared to, like you said, when you had first went and, and um, tried out some of the other groups that consisted mostly of white women. Um, I will say that the women that came to hang with Simone and I, they were ready for this environment. Mm-hmm. Like we, we filled that void and they came and they were open, they were vulnerable, and we always say no judgment zone. Like mm-hmm. come as you are, we're gonna talk about whatever is going, like there's no pretentiousness here. Okay. So whatever was, like we always say just be honest, be open, and we will do the same with you. Um, but I do think that sometimes black women, we do try to put on like this tough exterior because we don't want to be judged as like no. angry mothers, mm-hmm. angry black women. Mm-hmm. And there's already such a negative stereotype of, or there has been a negative mm-hmm. stereotype about black motherhood. Yes. And one thing that District Motherhood dispels, I, I believe, is that, you know, black women, we are married or you, we're married. We mm-hmm. have um, beautiful children. We're educated. Um, we did a survey, I think 45% of our moms have advanced degrees. I mean, wow. they're making six figures. Like, this is an affluent demo- demographic that mm-hmm. we cater to, our organization specifically. So I think that that's one way that District Motherhood has positioned black motherhood positively. Yeah. So it's an, o- it's an open space, it's an honest space, but you can also come and know that you'll find a group of accomplished women, mm-hmm. accomplished black women. Um, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you think that's, um, I would imagine, because of the demographic in the DMV? I mean, there's, so I think that we don't just want to paint black motherhood as affluent black women who have the resources to get their needs met if they need it, because the spectrum um, is all the stuff that we laugh about on social media, right? And all those videos that we cringe when we see on social media, because all motherhood is overwhelming, but I do agree that black motherhood is extremely overwhelming. We're Absolutely. carrying the, ra- mm-hmm. the weight of the world on our shoulders. So you and can see the difference, as a, even as a clinician, you can see the oh. difference from black motherhood and white motherhood. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, Sasha, when you were saying that the white women sometimes are more honest in those groups, I think that they just have a different truth. Mm-hmm. So they exactly. tell their truth. And then our truth doesn't feel like it fits there. Hmm. And so it's not that they're more honest. It's just that they have a different truth. And so they're talking about their truth. And you're like, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't even want to put that in. I know (laughs) for me, I wasn't able to, I felt like if I had, when I tried to speak to the black women that I knew about, hey, I'm having thoughts of harming my daughter. It was like. Well, that's hush, 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 hush. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, whereas, like, white women can be like, oh, f- fuck Johnny. Like, I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I'm tired of his ass. I'm about to drink a bottle of wine. Yeah. And it's like, you know, but me, I couldn't say, yo. Like, I couldn't say some yeah. of the things that I felt that they could say. Well, but that's a cultural th- thing, then. Yeah, right? I was right. about cultural to say, barriers. so you know, we're not about to talk about our feelings. We're not about to talk about, that's mm-hmm. why we're doing this show, right? Because. Mm-hmm. 
as black people, we struggle with speaking right. about what's really going on inside. We, we had this conversation. Yes. I was like, girl, you know, just lean on Jesus. Right. <laughs> like, I didn't even know what to say. Right, right, right. I was like, right. Right. You don't think it's got to be more through. open? Yeah. You, sorry, you don't think that we're becoming more no. open? And, and it could be mm-hmm. because of social media and because we're having more um, discussions, open discussions about mental oh, health I think in social general. social media has completely no, it's no, like open yeah. the door. Yeah. More open. We're absolutely more open, but there is still a huge stigma. And I think yes. the more mm-hmm. that we do see, like many more celebrities who are not seen as quote unquote crazy mm. are are being open about mental health issues and trying to bring a spotlight on mental health issues. And so that absolutely is finally beginning to make the dialogue more acceptable mm-hmm. but for years mm-hmm. um the the mental health community has been trying to reduce stigma and trying all the traditional and non-traditional yeah. ways and it has not broken the barrier but that's what social media does mm-hmm. um is well, breaks down barriers so i had this conversation literally two days ago right and somebody had written wrote i don't know how to, i can't speak right now y'all i'm very intelligent <laughs> but i'm just having a break right it's okay. somebody wrote <laughs> me the and they were like oh a friend of mine has mental illness like you know they were like talking about the show and all this other stuff and I don't know it triggered something in me which I know is all about me Mm -hmm. but I was just like I'm so tired of us talking about other people's Mm -hmm. mental illness tell me about your mental Mm -hmm. illness because that's what I I see as being open to the dialogue I do not see us being open to the truth of our own story Mm -hmm. like everyone can tell you about oh my father was mentally ill my mother what's going on with you I, and that's what I mean from the mommy perspective is like you'll listen to the story of like oh you know Does that her make and her, sense? her yeah like her and her kid like I'm glad like look at that little badass yeah, child yeah. you know I, I, if it was me I would do this and, and and you know we do that but then we don't look at like okay your kid might not be running all around but the, the you know the motherfucker can't even read like you know <laughs> right. what I'm so it's like there is He's nonverbal right right oh he yeah. has autism no bitch you just don't you teach him like, right. you teach him all right. day. Right. You know, <laughs> you know, they know all the rap songs and stuff like that. So we have like this wide spectrum of our parenting, mm-hmm. you know, and, That's and then, a different conversation. Right. And that, but then that brings me to like when when you, you, you built this organization and it has done wonders. And one of the things that I want to highlight about District Mother Hude is that because of who you um, are, you have been able to create ideas that are unheard of you know like the mom friends first time anyone has ever done that that something for people getting Huge. together of color a lot of the ideas that you have generated and, and cultivated within this area you know um and no shade to anybody else but the other mom groups haven't done so when you <laughs> but with that and especially in catering like to mostly affluent women who are who are part of the yes. uh, who are joining part of the organization how do we then like like let's peel back the layers and get all completely real? Mm-hmm. How do you then address the issues that we just even have with each other as black women? Ooh. Because now mm-hmm. you have these black women who are coming into the group who are moms, but they're still black women at the end of the day, and we still have our own issues with how we interact with each other. Mm-hmm. So, what are some of the things that you know? Have mm-hmm. you seen that? How do you address it? And 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 how do you foster an environment that says, "Yo, like we ain't for that." I can honestly that's say, God, yeah, that's an excellent question. I can honestly say that God is so good and that maybe it's because Simona and I are very genuine mm. people. We attract very genuine people. In the three years that we've been doing District Mother Hood, we have yet to have anybody messy attend our events. Awesome. Um, I think that the messy people aren't able to get tickets. They sell out. The, the computer crashes for them, whatever the case may be. <laughs> I mean, and Simone will say the same They're thing. Like our, our space is so beautiful and so sacred. We don't have, we have not had an instance yet where it's been cattiness, bitchiness within our events. That's awesome. And we let us pray that it, re- it remains that mm-hmm. way. That's not to say that it doesn't exist. Is there gossip and politics within the mommy space outside of our events? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do the other mom groups, is there, do we hear things? Yes, but all of that's outside of us. That has nothing to do with us. But if you're coming to hang with us, you have to know that you're coming in here correct. You're coming in here for a very specific reason. Whatever the theme of the event is, you're here to connect, build fellowship, build your mom tribe, and go home. We're not being messy here. What do you I say to it. the mom? Oh like, for example, myself, I know the first event that I went to. Um, Which one was that? That was the one. Was it the holiday event? When it you was and your husband came? Your, your, no, no, your no, guy, no. Your guy came. No, he's my he's my husband. Is your husband I'm, okay? Damn. I'm, 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 I'm like, living right. <laughs> 
<laughs> when you and someone and Kirk when he was fine. And I was like, Y'all look so good like, together. I didn't say nothing. I'm over here like <laughs> He's like your guy. Like, how many other guys do you have? <laughs> you She's supposed to be correct. To the show. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you see the transfer? <laughs> I just I just I was like, no. I have a husband. Yes. <laughs> the hobby part. You you came in looking the great. You, so like, what did I do? I was like, hey. no, the first event, it was another one. I was in the all black leather dress and I had on leopard. Oh, that was the mom loft. The, mom the loft. second so, mom loft, 2017. So yes. But I. Yeah, on the cape. Uh, yep, yep. <laughs> I deal with an intensely deep anxiety that a lot of people don't know. They think that, like, oh, because I'm so sure, they think other things that they're just like, oh, you can enter a room and, like, no, but when I say, like, I'm in the car crying or, like, literally when it's anxiety is a very real thing. And so for me, and, and I also. And How did you feel when you came into that space? Terrified. And I felt like I couldn't make a connection or friends with anyone. Really? But what I realized after that and in doing this show and in even seeking out my own therapy is that some of the connections that I don't often make is not maybe necessarily because of the other person, but because of my own internal mm-hmm. issues of, mm-hmm. of that fear, of that anxiety. And my experiences with black women Absolutely. has a lot of times been negative. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, or you have the, oh, well, you know, you're light-skinned, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, the mm-hmm. I was also at what, my heaviest mm-hmm. weight. So I've also encountered like very mm-hmm. negative and mean experiences when I was much, much bigger. Um, because people do treat you differently when you're mm-hmm. overweight. And so I carried that fear walking in the door. Oh, wow. So that probably doesn't generate an that openness. That blocks the energy, right? of, Absolutely. And so, Connectivity. and I say all that as my question of like, what would you say to the woman who, you know, was once like me or mm-hmm. feels this way currently, mm-hmm. who's, who wants to come into groups like yours, but is carrying that fear or is carrying that anxiety or, or is feeling like I haven't had the best experiences with other black women. How do I come into a district motherhood event for the first time and cultivate a relationship? Because part of that cultivation is changing the narrative of black motherhood, of black women in general. Absolutely, mm. absolutely, mm. wow. Um, well, first thing, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you come to a district motherhood event, it means that you're open, that you're mm-hmm. seeking some kind of connection because ultimately district, district motherhood is about building your mom tribe. You need a group of moms to support mm-hmm. you in every, in every capacity from childbirth to what doesn't matter the age, age of your children. You just need a mom squad, a mom. So if you come to hang with district motherhood, you're already open. And when we are prepping our events, our mom squad, we tell them, be friendly, be energetic, be welcoming. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't want you to come into the space. It's like, hey, mama, how you doing? You look great. Do you need anything? So we are already giving you positivity and positive energy when mm-hmm. we're there. We also tend to have, like, icebreakers. Um, and we encourage moms, don't leave here without a mom friend. That's awesome. We literally say that. You're here. Talk to the mother next to Make you. Ask them how old are your kids. Oh, wow. We, we have had mothers who attended the mom friends, I'll use, use that as an example. She was sitting next to a mother, they were talking, um, conversing, having a great time. Come to find out they live on the same street, but living mm. on the same street for five years. And didn't even and know. didn't know each other so they came to the mom friends. So it's like, you gotta open your mouth. Mm-hmm. You, you, you have yeah. to be vocal. And so we encourage, we literally say, if you came into this space, there are a hundred beautiful black women mm-hmm. in here, beautiful black mothers, and you leave and you don't have one friend, that's on you. That's on you, sis. So mm-hmm. we really do encourage our moms to like get, be open, put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. We have different icebreakers and activities mm-hmm. too that can be helpful. Um, and yeah, just be open because Simona and I, we didn't know each other. We knew each other via social media, but your social media persona is different than mm-hmm. who you are in real life. Yeah. We may not have clicked in real life. And she will tell you, Simone is a girl's girl. I love, like, I love, love, love her. She's my sister, but she's a girl's girl. She got 30 girls. She got group chat. She got all that. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like my circle is a line. <laughs> like, we ain't used to this because I'm the same way. I've had, you know, bad interactions mm-hmm. with black women in the past. Um, so I had to, I had to be vulnerable. How do, How do we do it's that? Let me address, address that, that from a clinic. Yeah. 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 So, like, but I, I was that. about to say, because people always say this, and I think this is our own challenge of sisterhood and self-acceptance. Have you had challenges with black men? Mm. Ooh, you better talk that talk. Ooh. But you talk still talk. Well, kept seeing white, black men. <laughs> you still kept seeing black men, right? We ain't so, on that uh, <laughs> so if you had a challenge with a black one. <laughs> if you had a I challenge had Filipino with, one. <laughs> I didn't say you didn't have no other ones, but I'm just she 
chickens. No, 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 I do. I do still. I love, I love black men. Absolutely. I do. I think Absolutely. So, beautiful. so let's transfer yeah. that same love to mm. black women. That's why you got that MD. That unconditional, right? right? We, we have this connection to mm. black men that we can't shake no matter what they do to us. Don't matter. We <laughs> cannot shake it. Why can't we feel that way about each other? So what is the issue? Do you As, think it's like a jealousy yeah, thing? Yeah, what or is like, the well, source? And how do we get past that issue? Like, like I've realized that mm. I am so tough on women. Yeah. Oh, really? Because of my own experience. <laughs> but I've, but I've but really had to... Yeah, we, yeah, but we, I think what attracted it, like, we're both very direct. Yeah, So True. it was kind of like, this is what it is, this is what it is, and I didn't feel like... I didn't. I never felt like you were intentionally trying to be malicious or anything. I felt like you were like you were being yourself, and I could respect that, and I could deal with you on that level. Mm-hmm. Where it's like with other women, it'd be like. I think it's hard. <laughs> we as women, we mm-hmm. see our reflection in each other. Amen. So when a woman messes up, we see ourselves, mm. and so we don't want to see that. And so we mm-hmm. put her down because we're rejecting what's happening on the inside of us. Ooh. And so the more comfortable we are with ourselves, the more we can love other women. That's including right. black women. And so I think that's, if we just start forgiving ourselves, right? Accepting ourselves, mm. it will be much easier to have better relationships as black women. And it's, it's just that simple, mm. but it's just that hard, right? Because it starts itself. And we keep saying what the other women are doing to other women, but mm. it's how we're seeing them that's causing the problem for us. So the how do we- bears you no know ill will. So then if we're all part of the universe, how could, like no one's out here trying to destroy you. Like, but I do think that there are people who absolutely. aren't out necessarily out here trying to destroy you, but who are out here who are intentionally envious or who are intentionally malicious to you. Like, and you haven't done anything to them. But like, do you treat everybody the, because you're looking for those few people? <clears throat> yeah, you go. What do you, you treat, mean? Say that again. You treat everybody as if they are. You are looking for those few people who, who act, have treated me who that have way. Have treated you that way. I'm afraid. Like, are you another one? You know what I right, mean? Right. But just imagine. Mm-hmm. Let's just pick a number. Let's pick a big number and say twenty percent. Mm -hmm. are that malicious, evil, spiteful, vengeful, nasty. And so you're always on the lookout for that 20%. That means that 80% of the time you're missing out. I think and for you me, see what, what you're looking for. But I think mm-hmm. for me, what happens is, is that, you know, like, I'm very open. And so I'll be, like, really, like, oh, who cares about that other person? And I'll just be all vulnerable. But then again, whew, this goes a little deeper. I had a very volatile um, relationship with my mom. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. when I look or seek to other women, I'm damn near seeking, not necessarily a mom, but, we like, I'm, say. like, desperate yeah, for like woman say. connection yeah. because I didn't really have a mom. I was raised mostly by my dad. Mm-hmm. And so for me, like the, like friendships are like, like I don't have nobody else. Mm-hmm. So I create a huge amount of expectation. <laughs> and so when that's not met, it's almost as it's a huge disappointment, mm-hmm. but it's almost as if like, like, you know, I want to go into an event and be like, oh, okay, will they be my friend? Like, I want a friend. Like, I want a woman friend. I want a mommy friend. And and then, you know, if someone maybe is like, they just not feeling me. Like, everybody yeah, not yeah, going to yeah, feel yeah, your right, vibe. Right, right, right. I'm like, you know, like, that, <laughs> but that disappoint, you know, right. that letdown or, or you know. But what does it say in the Bible? To be a friend, show that so friendly or something like that. Something like, like that. It's, it's close <laughs> yeah. to that. It's That's a paraphrase. Right. That's, yeah. right. That's right. That's right. So I don't know. Like, I see. But, like, but I feel like in saying mm-hmm. that, it's like I've. I've been a friend and haven't received that friendship back. And but that's what I, creates that anxiety. You of, know, with, if I be honest to myself, when I had those experiences of people being um, negative to me, I participated in it. I'm not mm. innocent of it. Mm-hmm. I'm not you like, you know, I, I was, I was, you know, I was at the same frequency or I was like, you know, attracting that because that lived inside of me someplace. And, that, and, and as I start to be like, let me get rid of my jealousy Mm-hmm. I get rid of the people and the energy around me that's jealous. Not to say it's all gone, but like, I, I guess now I'm a, I'm being open with myself about what I received. I was part of what I received was in me, and now I can let go of it because I it didn't just come out of nowhere. It wasn't like, oh my God, this just jumped. This person <laughs> is trying to get me fired from my job. What it, it was something, an energy whether it was my ego or my pride that I was walking into the room with that's pulling that to me. And I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't cause it. I did not cause it, but I attracted you it to me. into it. I mean, I, I can't subscribe because, I, I mean, you know, yeah, I've told you I've had a situation where I've had women say to me, 
you know, at your size, I'm surprised you have a good husband. Ain't that so, shit? you know, people you not, it ain't, ain't no energy people. frequency that I'm putting mm-hmm. out for someone to say that to me. You know what I'm saying? But in their mind, they felt like a, a woman who is big doesn't, you know, doesn't deserve that. So I can't subscribe to that on the level of that's not an energy that I would give somebody. But that's not about you. Right. That's, that's not you. Right. So right. So, so why are you receiving that as about you? Because, right? and because, because we know that the way that people treat people who are larger in this country it's not about the people who are large that's right abusive. it's a it's a cultural thing it's something that's non-specific it's not like if another larger person came in the room they would have the same feeling it's not like they were targeting specifically you that's just their general ignorance and behavior and whatever so for you to absorb that as somehow personalized that's where your challenge is mm-hmm. you're like you said when you're so friendly and open you're personalizing things Absolutely. that are other people's generalizations and problems they didn't i you know this is this kind of saying about don't give other people real estate in your head mm-hmm. 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 right they're not paying rent mm-hmm. right they're not worth it so that person has gone on made they they pro- maybe they, they thought they were funny maybe whoever whatever they thought they were it has nothing to do with me. So for the mom who wants to, like, she wants to be a part of a different group, maybe she does have certain issues that, that she's Because, see, that's what I'm saying. How like, you... when you took it in, you engaged it. So now you participatory in it. That's what's happened to me. Like, when I'm like, okay, I could see something, and I couldn't let it go and not be part of me. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? I like, just, repeat that when you like, say, when you took it in and per- you, basically when I you, personalized it. When you personalize it. something... You engage it. Now you're engaged with it. Now you're going to interact with it. Now you're going to combat it. You're going to give it. Mm. You're going to give it Your the energy. same energy yeah. mm-hmm. that it's giving you. Mm. So now you're dropping your frequency or to meet that thing because you can only engage something at its own frequency. Mm. So now I'm going to drop down to your level when you just you know who knows what the fuck is going on with you and why you said that. People are going to say ignorant stuff to you whether Absolutely. you're big or small, whether you're dark or light, whether mm-hmm. you got straight hair or curly it hair. It was harder got... for me though. I was dark. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what it would really be was. the steps that you would recommend to a mom who's like, I want to cultivate better relationships with other women. I, I want to cultivate better relationships not only with other women but with black women. Yeah. What are some of those recommendations or steps that they could take so that they can enter these spaces mm-hmm. and you know with positivity or not personalizing different things? I think the first thing is something that Nikki kind of hit on is to be open, Mm -hmm. right? To let go of all your fears, all your anxieties, and give it a chance, Mm -hmm. right? Because like like you said, you know, you can sit in the car and talk yourself out of a thing, right? And before, I mean, there are many women who will go to a place and sit in the car and turn around, never even I was by myself. I wasn't going to go in. I was by myself. It's very, very very (laughs) hard. So the first is to to be courageous enough to be, if you want something different, you got to do something different. So don't go in the event and look on my phone and be like, no, I'm like right, 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 right. Because I do so, that. <laughs> right. So the first thing is to be open. The second thing is to smile. Yeah. Ooh. Right? If don't you we smile, smile, are we? I was like, <laughs> no. yeah. Like, don't be creepy <laughs> smile. <laughs> but if you smile, someone's going to know that you're open, that you mm-hmm. might be approachable. If you're sitting there anxious, most of the time that's going to come off as scared or angry or it's not gonna come off as friendly and open and inviting. Now, some people have that intuition and they might push past that and come and try to make you feel at ease, but then you're putting a burden on the other person Mm. to push past your issues, Mm. right? So try to be open, try to be um, available, try to smile, that sends a message. It's the same with your body language. If you're Mm. sitting at the table and you're looking down and your, your hands are folded, whatever, Somebody's going to think she doesn't want to be bothered. Mm. You could be in a room with 99 other women who are excited to get yeah. a chance to meet somebody just like you, mm-hmm. but you're sending them the message with your face and with your spirit that you're not trying to be friends with nobody here. Mm. And the so, street psychologist has some advice, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Y'all, for all of y'all who don't know, Star is it's our street star. psychologist. <laughs> she no degree. was a barber <laughs> at one point in her life. So she, she feels obligated. pre phd Go ahead. Right? <laughs> Preach, Star. I would say <laughs> if you want to have better relationships with other people, have a better relationship with yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's my advice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's right, always that's true. Nikki, what would you, in, in some final words as we're closing out, what are some of the things that you'd want to just touch on as far as 
you know, what your organization is offering, any words of advice you would have in just cultivating these relationships and, and building, you know, with a tribe of black women, how to build that tribe, like just anything else that you would add? Um, I think that you actually really touched on it. Um, being open, being honest, being friendly, um, but also not taking things personally. Mm -hmm because people are going to talk, people are going to judge, people mm -hmm. are going to critique, but that's Thanks. if that's them. Mm -hmm. And honestly, anyone who hasn't tried to do something or perhaps is envious of you is going to try mm -hmm. and get in your head and say something to psych you out. So just, I don't take too much. I take it with a grain of salt, pretty much. If she's talking about me, okay, well, that's how you feel, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. Right. So I don't internalize anything. Um, how do you not do that? I, I don't know. I it could be because I've already had bad I've had bad relationships in the past. Um, I've had girl like I fell out with a girlfriend that I was friends with for twenty years, and like that broke me. But I I just learned to. Do you feel like that's a it, wall though? It, it was a wall, but Simona broke that wall down. Okay, I can mm. honestly say being open to her, mm -hmm. I opened up my heart to her and that friendship, and because I opened myself to her it opened up Pandora's box that is District Motherhood. Mm. And now we're helping so many other that women. That openness has now opened up to other women. Oh, my gosh. I mean, so many, the, the, I wish that I could share our DMs and our emails with you because I will say it is, it is really heavy, the work that we do. It's more than just creating a, a social organization, more than just posting on Instagram, more than just having these events. I mean, these women actually really seek counsel, perhaps I can get your information, I can refer them <laughs> to you seriously, mm -hmm. because we're not equipped to, to deal with some of the questions and comments that we get, but our, my openness allowed for other women to open themselves up. Bring Dr. Royce to one of y'all events. No, I, mm -hmm. I really do think so. Mm -hmm. um, and so just quickly, we're getting ready for our 2020 The Mom Friends. Mm -hmm. um, we have Mom's Ooh. Giving coming up the end of this month. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our husband holiday party. We have an ugly sweater party that's coming up. <laughs> we have our black owned mom market coming up on oh, November wow. the 30th. Um, and we're ironing out our 2020 programming and we will be touching more so on mental health. So I would like to. So we need it. to be there, right? So yeah. gonna bring, uh, no, absolutely. And we're going to bring all our clinicians. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and I got a pre PhD. <laughs> That's good. Dr. Royster, any, like, any, anything dope. else, Nikki, you want to add? No, no, no. I think that thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great to be around beautiful, black, intelligent women mm -hmm. and not by a baby. So this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Royster, what would you add in, in, you know, with your little, you know, doctor self? I mean, <laughs> well, just empty. You know? Right. Because she always... broke me down in like two minutes. <laughs> like, first of all, oh, seriously. <laughs> it's out of love. The I received that. People yes. need to hear that, yes, you know, because yes, I'm not the only one who's dealt not with a, that. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So, you know, as always, my big um, push is communication and connection. And I think this show has been all about that. Moms get isolated and that mm -hmm. isolation can be deadly mm -hmm. for the mom yep. or for the baby yep. or the husband. We see it on TV. It's very sad and very tragic. Um, so the connection that we need to be healthy, to be thriving parts of our community is mandatory. So if you don't have an organization like Mother Hude or Mocha Moms or Jack and Jill or, or a sorority or a church, or find some group of people that you can connect to mm -hmm. um, little bit by little bit so that you can let someone know when you need help. Mm. That's big. Ooh. Last word. I got one last word. Not two? No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have, I, maybe it's two. <laughs> now I want to do two. <laughs> now you're making me want to do two. So last thoughts are um, be present with self. Mm -hmm. Be honest and present with self. And be able to detach from being present with self so that you can see yourself. And then you can see the beauty of yourself. And then you can adjust and make choices of who do I want to be? How do I want to move in this world? Mm -hmm. It's okay to see something that is not helping you mm -hmm. at this current moment. It could have helped you in the past. Mm -hmm. It's okay to sit with self and say, oh, okay. And that's what therapy helps. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't, I don't want to do that anymore because it's not going to help in this current present and where I'm at in my life right now. Okay. Make a choice. Make a change mm -hmm. and be kind to yourself. Absolutely. If you can't be, when I meet people who are unkind 
and who are just, you know, you can see they don't have any patience, their tolerance level for people. I know that, oh my God, you must have be living in hell inside yourself. Mm -hmm. So be kind to yourself. And when we see people who are not kind to themselves, have grace with them because they are you. Mm -hmm. You are only seeing it because it is you. Mm -hmm. So that's all I got. Mm. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to say after Dalai Lama and shit. <laughs> I'm just saying, but, you know, I'm on my, I'm on my, on my frequency. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I think I have one, um, one last thing to say go is ahead, that we're stronger together. There you mm -hmm. go. Um, I'm someone who will isolate myself, especially earlier in this year with the postpartum, but my friends wouldn't allow me. My other mom mm. friends, they were just like, no, we're going to come over. We're going to vacuum. We're going to take the baby, whatever we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and even just um, how District Motherhood has grown so rapidly. It would, it's not because of me and it's not because of Simone, it's because of us together. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people like, you are a force with someone else. Mm -hmm. So finding a connection, finding a partner, a good girlfriend, and just like growing together. Together you can grow things and together you can get through things. Absolutely. And that's, I'll leave it at that. I would just add last word. Um, I think that we as women, especially as black women, we need to make it an intentional point um, to, as Nikki said, grow together, to as be with ourselves, give grace to other people, other women. And part of this growth, even for myself, has been able to, like, I need to show more grace to others because... God knows I've needed grace. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I think that as, as black women, we need to really make it a priority to cultivate relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. um, genuine your mom, relationships. Genuine relationships. And go in it with the intent to be genuine and cultivate a genuine relationship. Because a lot of times, you know, we, we build these, these facade, these relationships, but they're not significant. And we don't. And we don't commit to them or we're not consistent mm. with them, but go into it with the intention to be as genuine as possible and as vulnerable as possible. And I think that, you know, we just need to cultivate these relationships more. And if you're a mom, please, you know, cultivate relationships with other moms because it really, it, it's a help to be able to talk to other women and they be able to relate to you. And if you feel as though maybe they don't understand, you know, like I didn't have any other women who understood me wanting to harm my child. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. over time, you know, that prompted me to start something of my own. Over go. time, I did meet other women mm -hmm. and I wasn't afraid, you know, and, and that, that, that has to be said. Over time, I became less afraid of living in my truth. Mm -hmm. The truth mm -hmm. of the matter was, this was how I felt. Mm -hmm. This was what I went through. And, and I can't allow anyone else to make me feel ashamed about that. So don't be afraid. Smile. Be open. Let's mm -hmm. cultivate these relationships so that we can really start to change the narrative like District Motherhood has been doing about black motherhood. And we out. <laughs>